Hello and welcome to part 2 of Circle Theorems. From our last video we know there were 7 Circle Theorems. Here's a recap of what we covered in the last tutorial. These are our two Circle Theorems. The angle at the centre is twice the angle at the circumference. Remember it doesn't always look like an arrowhead. And the opposite angles of our cyclic quadrilateral sum to 180 degrees. This is not a circle theorem, but a key angle fact that two radii form an isosceles triangle. It's also important to be sure you know the properties of our circle, so I'll keep them here for reference. So let's look at our next circle theorem. Here the circle theorem states the angle subtended at the circumference by a semicircle is always 90 degrees. Now, Subtended is quite a tricky word to remember, so let's focus on this first. Subtended means if we were to connect the extreme ends of any line, we would create an angle. A nice little trick is to look at the word sub, meaning below. Like a submarine going below water, think of the angle being formed below. Now, let's look at it in context of our circle. Using this as a basic reference, the angle subtended at the circumference by a semicircle is always 90 degrees. This means the angle made by connecting the ends of the semicircle to the circumference is always 90 degrees. Given a circle doesn't have a top or bottom, we can also have a subtended angle here. You can see from this demonstration as I move the angle along the circumference, it will always be 90 degrees. So now we have our next circle theorem. Let's apply it to a simple question. This question states points A, B and D are points on a circle with a centre O. We know A to D is the diameter of the circle and we know B to A to D is 58 degrees. The question asks us to calculate angle A to D to B, and we must give a reason for our answer. Now you know our circle theorem, why don't you give it a try? Press pause if you need. As you can see, we have a diameter, and we have an angle subtended at the circumference by the semicircle. Therefore, we know angle A to B to D must be 90 degrees, because the angle subtended at the circumference by a semicircle is always 90 degrees. Now we can work out angle A, D, B. Well, given we know angles in a triangle sum to 180, 180 subtract our 90, subtract our 58, gives angle ADB being 32 degrees, because the sum of angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. Now let's try a trickier question, using some key angle facts. Here the question states, points A, B, C and D are points on a circle. We know A to B is the diameter of the circle, we also know D to C is parallel to A to B. We're given angle B to A to D to be 70 degrees. We're asked to calculate angle B to D to C. And we must give reasons for our answer. Why don't you give it a try and press pause if you need. Reading the question, we have a diameter. This means the angle subtended at the circumference, using the diameter to show the semicircle, is always 90 degrees. So we know angle A to D to B is 90 degrees, because the angle subtended at the circumference by a semicircle is always 90 degrees. Now we can work out angle A to B to D. 
We know 180, subtract the 90, subtract the 70, gives us 20 degrees. This is because the sum of angles in a triangle is always 180 degrees. Now, let's see if we can work out angle B to D to C using our knowledge on parallel lines. You may be able to spot our Z shape. From the Z shape, we can identify that angle B to D to C must be 20 degrees. This is because it's an alternate angle and alternate angles are equal. Now let's look at another circle theorem using our knowledge on circle theorems we looked at in the last tutorial. Here you can see the angle at the centre is twice the angle at the circumference. So even when I move the angle around the circumference, it still remains to be 63 degrees in this example. Now, let's create another angle at the circumference. Here you can see it's also 63 degrees. And even here it's 63 degrees. So, let's remove the angle at the center. And this gives us our next circle theorem. Angles subtended at the circumference by the same arc are equal. This is our arc. And you can see the angles subtended at the circumference by the same arc are always equal. And remember, subtended doesn't always mean it's below. So we can have these equal subtended angles using this arc. So now we have two circle theorems. So let's try another exam question. This question states that points A, B, C and D are in a circle with a centre O. We know AOD is the diameter of the circle and angle CBD is 28 degrees. We also know BDA is 32 degrees. The question wants us to find angle B to D to C, ensuring we give a reason for each stage of our working out. Now you have all the information you need to tackle this question, so give it a try and pause if you need. Hopefully you'll be able to spot a circle theorem. Here you can see angle D, B, C is the same as D, A, C. This is because these angles share the same arc. So our reason is because angles subtended at the circumference by the same arc are equal. This means angle D to A to C must be 28 degrees. Let's see if we can find another angle. Here you might be able to spot angle B, D, A is the same as B, C, A. This is because these angles share the same arc. So the reason is angles subtended at the circumference by the same arc are equal. Therefore, angle B, C, A must be 32 degrees. Now, Let's see if we can use the diameter. You might be able to spot our other circle theorem. Given the fact that we have a diameter, we can identify angle ACD is 90 degrees. Because the angle subtended at the circumference by the semicircle is 90 degrees. Given the fact that we needed to find angle B to D to C, you might be able to see our triangle. So we simply do 180, subtract our 28, subtract our 32, subtract our 90, gives us a final answer for angle BDC to be 30 degrees. And the reason is because the sum of angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. Now let's look at our next circle theorem. This states that the tangent meets the radius at 90 degrees. No matter where the tangent is, 
it will always meet the radius at 90 degrees. This is one of the nicest circle theorems because it's the easiest one to recognize. Now we have three circle theorems. Some are easier to spot than others, so let's see if we can apply them to an exam question. This question says points S and T are points on the circumference with the center O. We know PT is a tangent to the circle. We know SOP is a straight line. We also know angle O to P to T is 32 degrees. We're asked to work out angle X and we must give reasons for our answer. See if you can try and press pause if you need. Hopefully you were able to spot one of the easiest circle theorems. You might see angle OTP is 90 degrees and this is because the tangent meets the radius at 90 degrees. From here we can work out angle TOP. 180 subtract our 90 subtract our 32 gives an angle of 58 degrees. And this is because the angles in a triangle sum to 180 degrees. From here, we can calculate angle S to O to T. 180 take away of 58 gives 122. The reason for this is because angles on a straight line sum to 180 degrees. Now, let's refer to one of our key angle facts. We have a radius OS and we have a radius OT. This means angle OST is the same as angle OTS. This is because we have formed a triangle which is isosceles. Now we can work out angle X by simply doing 180, subtract our 122, divided by 2. This gives us angle X being 29 degrees. So in summary, we've covered five circle theorems and one angle fact. Ensure to watch the next tutorial for the remaining circle theorems and more exam questions. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.